I'm Marcy Lundy. Today is Tuesday, April 4th, 2023, and this is the Cult of Kindness podcast. This week, we will have both an audio and a video version of the episode, and I'm delighted to have our guest this week, Dr. Pat Boulong. Welcome, Pat. Thank you very much. I appreciate being here and looking forward to our time together today. Yes, same here. So Dr. Pat is a, the founder of the Health Team Network, and she is a mentor, coach, and executive life empowerment strategist. You have been uh, at this for 35 plus years, and you're quite accomplished as I was uh, doing my homework and learning about you. I just was completely blown away. So if you could tell the Cult of Kindness audience a little bit more about yourself. Well, I always say that I'm a Midwesterner through and through. I was born, I was raised. I was schooled. And one of the things I like about being from the Midwest is that we love everybody. <laughs> it's not, you know, and, and there's that kind of like random kindness that's in your DNA. Right. And, you know, and, and with that, you know, I've always loved seeing people uh, thrive. I like seeing people, you know, it's just like if, you know, someone's struggling and it's thinking, you know, why, why isn't anyone stopping helping that person? You know, mm-hmm. because somebody out of the thousands of us should definitely know a quicker, easier, faster, safer way to go from point A to point C. And yeah. so I love sharing that kind of knowledge with people. And I've been given that God-given gift that when someone tells me something, my ex-husband always used to say, you should be an attorney. And he said, because you can just like read, you can usually read right straight through that. And I love doing that because it's just, it's just like, why do I want to wait? you know, to have a crisis or to, you know, be in a situation that, you know, it's a constant uphill battle. Like there's a, there's more than one road to go to Rome. And if somebody knows a shortcut that's safe, quicker, and with simpler solutions, I'm all for it. And I like helping people on that turnaround with that also. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. Uh, I have recently, or not recently, I've been in Colorado 13 years, not quite the Midwest, but I grew up in Southern California. And it's just really refreshing to be in a place where people do say hello, or if you're at a stoplight, they look around, they're not just zoned in on their phone or, you know, just so self-involved. And so I get what you're saying about the Midwest for sure. (laughs) Oh. You know, every time I get on a phone with, um, you know, on a call or I've got a client from the Midwest, it's just, you know, there's some things you just never have to say. You know, oh. it's like you have you have that kind of like, you know, you've known each other for thousands of years sometimes. And, you know, and, and I can pick them out. It seems like, um, you know, I was recently in a Nordstrom's rack. Do oh, okay. I took a girl day off because I took... One day I just said, I have done. I need to have space. I need to go do something. I need to go buy 20 pairs of shoes. <laughs> Didn't buy 20. But I, I did meet this awesome woman that was there. And people actually came up to us and said, wow, it's so great to see girlfriends laugh so much and, you know, and, and be in that, in that space. And um, we both looked at each other at the same time and looked back at them and said, we don't know each other. <laughs> just, and it was just, it was one of those moments. And I, I'm glad that God gave me the knack, you know, to be able to, you know, almost talk my way out of anything, so to speak. <laughs> but it was fun. Yeah. Well, yes, we chatted a bit beforehand and you're very personable and, you know, that's a breath of air and especially in your line of work, people want to feel comfortable and, if they feel that instant trust and sincerity, then that definitely makes a big difference. Yeah, it does. You know, the trust is a huge word. You know, a lot yeah. of people don't follow through on it. No, yeah, no, and no. That, that's, that's something, I, maybe it's because I went to a private parochial school for 12 years and mm-hmm. had nuns the whole way. So when you didn't keep <laughs> your word, you got the stick. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but the, you know, but the, you know, but this, um, that, that it, wisdom comes from, you know, people showing up in your life. Everyone wants somebody to show up in their life. I always ask the question, do you show up in your life for yourself? Mm-hmm. Are yes. you committed to yourself? Because if you're committed to yourself, right, then you have, that's half the battle, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, and you can make, take, 
you can make better decisions. You can get all the information then and get make better decisions. And you can check things off your list like, well, that's really not that important. But this is really important to me. And then if you have somebody that's a coach with a mentor's heart or, you know, somebody who you can go to that you trust to have that conversation about. So you can make a decision that's quicker. You know, and really gets you unstuck because I keep on finding so many times when I read a story or go back and someone's struggling, it always goes back to being stuck from something that happened to you at some other point in time. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and, and there, and there wasn't the appropriate person, right? Around to mm-hmm. be able to, um, have that discussion with you to work through those pieces of the puzzle, you right. know, so that you could put them in a safe place. So yes. that's important. For the last, I'd say, two months on the podcast, we've really been focusing on self-kindness. And what you just said is so correct. You can get stuck in something that happened 15 years ago. And if you weren't sure how to process that, you're just living with that day to day. And something happens, you realize, oh, my gosh, I have never processed that experience. And well, you know, here's the bigger problem. Is that your body, your consciousness, I always talk to the brains, like the lizard brain that is the one that always telling you that you're not going to go do it okay, or that is the, and you want it to work when the saber tooth tiger or someone pulls in front of your car. And then you have your mammalian brain, you know, which is stores all your emotions, anything that's happened and the emotion that goes along with it. So if you want to change the message that you do in your life, you got to change the message that mammalian brain is receiving. And so if you can go back and you can go back to that time space and or event of where that you got locked, because right. any time that anything represents anything similar to that, your mammalian brain go, no, that's when that happened, you know, mm-hmm. and then your body has the same cellular reaction and it keeps on burying it deeper and deeper and deeper. So you have other layers to like take off, you know, something that might've happened when you were two years old and then you're still thinking like oh my god why am i 27 i have abandonment issues you know or you might realize that when you're 40 like where did that come from you know and i can tell you true story my parents took me to the hospital when i was two years old and they left me at the hospital when i was two years old because i had pneumonia for two and a half weeks where would i ever got the idea that i was being abandoned you know, and when one of my one of my mentors and teachers did some work on me for that, I'm going like, I don't think so. Two, I don't think anything happened to me at two years old. I was just two years old, right. and you know, and when I asked my mother, she says, "Oh no, you were really sick. We took you to the hospital," and I but that trickled in other relationships until I was able to recognize that and get that fixed so it doesn't bother me, has never bothered me ever since then. And that's been over 20 years now. But when mm-hmm. I'm, with that realization made a huge difference in my relationships, my career, you know, in my life. And we need to, we need to keep a handle on that. For sure. And, and the awareness of that, but then being completely unaware until you spoke with your mother, it's like, oh, yes, <laughs> there was uh, <laughs> she verified it <laughs> you know it's just like but it made you know like when it happened then it makes sense because if it makes sense to you then you can put it in a safe place right. you know or you keep on saying like why do I keep on dating the wrong guy why do I keep on getting a job that I hate right you know why am I setting myself up for that again and again and again and again and if you can get mm-hmm. a handle on the source of that and have someone who you trust take you to that place so it's safe then you can put a lid on it and say, so next time something happens, you go, oh, I know what that is. Yes. Let me just you know, I, don't, I don't have to do that ever again. So sorry. <laughs> see you later. You know, yeah. I recognize your face. <laughs> You're gone. <laughs> I know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, Pat, you have a wonderful book called Why Are You Sick, Fat, and Tired? So, first of all, people may say, oh, I, I, that's quite the title. Can you tell us how that became the title of your book? Well, I was looking to write a book about that would help masses of people get unstuck in their life and get stuck mm-hmm. in their health. Mm-hmm. And I had all these questionnaires that I had from that I used to give in my office. And and when I gave one out, when I was starting to coach, you know, virtually, people would always leave certain places, you know, empty. And so right. I was like, why'd you do that? And, you know, and they said, like, well, I don't, 
they didn't understand what I was asking. And I'm thinking, okay, if I say it this way, will it help you? Sure. Hmm. You know, so when I would say people, I would say, you know, you're sick, you don't. Because sickness takes a while for it to accumulate. Sometimes what we do is very insidious and takes years and years. Other times you can have exposure, but whatever is lurking below the surface surfaces up and rears its ugly head. Look at all those poor people during the, when, you know, COVID in 2019 going into 2020, you know, was unleashed. And a lot of people who had immune system issues that they didn't know they had because they haven't manifested out that far were hit with a brick wall. And a lot of people lost their lives, unfortunately. But when you have, when you look at the name of that book, you know, if you look at the first book had pills on it and everything else like that and i said no people want to have like you know i want to know i have diabetes can this book help me i have chronic fatigue does that help me how about you know um you know any other things like heart disease you know and gallbladder you know intestinal and gut problems bloating constipation all those things they're on the like second edition cover because it just shows you you're in the right place because we all have signs and symptoms and if we take anything that's over the counter you know, then you have to go like, well, what is that masking for me? Mm-hmm. You know, and because you want to go back to the root, you want to go back to the source. So the title came up talking to my sister, you know, and I just went like, you know, I said to her, fat and tired. And she goes, mm-hmm. what about the sick part? I mean, that's what she said. What about <laughs> the sick part? And I said, okay, I go sick, fat and tired. And then she said, but why? You always ask people why. You got to have why someplace in that title. Right. And so I went, great. Why are you sick, fat, and tired? Okay. And a lot of people, you know, you know if you're tired and you know if you are fat, basically. You can look in a yeah. mirror, but you can have the only way you to know if you have internal fat that's doing damage, which is called VAT fat, is mm-hmm. if you take a body composition test. Okay. And like I just said a couple of seconds ago, that people don't know if they're sick. A lot of people, you don't wake up going, oh, I'm sick. Um, or you have something that happens like, you know, maybe, you know, and around, I always use the word 40 because most men will say they're great until they're 40. Then they have, they start complaining of stuff. But when you ask that question, it's like, well, when's the first time you felt like this? Has, how's your health been in the last two years? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just, and sometimes you don't realize as we've seen in, in, in creating new norms, is that we don't realize some of those things that we're feeling, we're saying, oh, well, that's okay. I mean, the person who has very poor posture, you've seen the old lady, old man syndrome, like leaning forward and walking with a cane, right? So right. when you see, when you see that, they weren't just like all of a sudden from here to there, you <laughs> right. know, it's just like, it took a period of time. And when you lose your structure, you lose function. Right. And that's something really important to know. And like, where are your heads at? Like a lot of people sleep with way too many pillows at night. And mm. so like when, you know, one of my reasons I, you know, was mentioning it now is because I'm working on a pilot with a woman who's a plant spiritualist. And my job is to t- you know, talk about food and talk about exercise. But I was thinking, you know, when people sleep and they're like this, I go for years, all these muscles that are in this part is called flexion start to get weak. So where is it supposed to go? You know, so we don't have that, you know, like tone part of our under underneath our chin again without doing a lot of like sometimes surgical stuff, which is for me not an option. I wouldn't do that. But, you know, but it's it's those pieces of the puzzle when you start looking like, why does that happen? Why does that happen? Yeah. You know, and, you know, and why, why talk about health in the first place? You know, and, and the reason truly is is because where your mind goes your body follows and if you and you need your health for everything so you got to have two of those components in place at 150 percent in that's order it. to to work against your odds in your environment right that's right? so funny yeah. you brought that up about the pillows i was just talking to my mother yesterday and you know she was just saying she had soreness and in the area she said that she was experiencing it i said well when was the last time you changed your pillow she couldn't even remember, so I was like, "Oh well, let's start there." <laughs> you probably need to <laughs> well, <do> start. <laughs> yes, and and you know, it's just like if you take a picture of your mother, everybody should go out and do this. Get mm-hmm. their best buddy, have them come over to your house, throw your pillow, lay flat with your chin just your head normally just in that position right. here, right. and just take a picture looking straight down. 
you know, and see where, you know, and kind of angle it here so you see this. And then if you have a couple pillows on you, you may just like, even look at my neck right here. Look what happens. This kind of all of a sudden just goes sag. (laughs) <laughs> and, and then so but if you can like you know when you're sleeping if you like when you're moving your head around or if you're in a position where you're not moving your head then those muscles will get weak you're sleeping eight hours a night seven hours a night you know and it just it's just like a, a seed you know a little bit of water for thought you know on that so you really want to make sure that you have you know and you're doing exercises to exercise the back of your neck and not the front it's already strong enough Right. And so, it, it, and then you know, go from there. But you know, when you t- help your mom with that, tell her to take a look at that. It's shocking. Oh. <laughs> I did it with a friend of mine about three weeks ago before we started this pilot. We're talking about what exercises, and I, that was my shocking. I'm thinking, oh my god, I'm getting rid of all my pillows. <laughs> just, I'm only going to use one, <laughs> and, yeah. and I did it. It just, it was, it was that a picture's worth a thousand words, mm. and if you can do things like that that you have that awareness about and you have more awareness about your health. You know, right. you have more awareness about what your posture is because yeah. you need good posture for all your organ systems to work, function well also. Absolutely. But for the, for, for the, the book doesn't talk about that. This is an add on, but the, um, <laughs> But this, but the point is about the book too. That's important to realize is it acts as a workbook, a guidebook, an advocating tool, you know, so that you can ask the right questions. Because a lot of physicians in the United States only give you fifteen minutes to talk to them, and they're right. usually saying, "Hey, how you doing? How's your family?" I don't care about those questions. I want to know the meat and potatoes. If I'm paying for it, I want to know the meat and potatoes for it. And so, you know, I want to know better uh, solutions you know, for that so that I can, um, you know, ask the right questions. And if you want to ask the right questions, you've got to have the right information. So if you know where your weakest link is, you know where your strongest link is. And if you answer those questions, because it's a book of questions about your organ systems, you know, a lot of times Western medicine doesn't know how to diagnose you unless you have a flat tire. I don't want you to get the flat tire. Exactly. Exactly. You know? Yes. So, yes. Well, Understanding the title, that's wonderful because people, you know, they see it and initially they're, they're drawn in because it's like, okay, well, I'm all of the above, so I need to pick this up and read it. I wanted to yeah, ask, that, go ahead. I, I just laugh because so many people, I tell them the title, like, I just say, has anyone tried to kill you yet? Because they don't yeah. like the word fat. <laughs> But, right. you know, it's just, I come, I call an ace and ace of spade of spade. I mean, it's like, it's, I mean, even say like, I like, oh, I don't say about myself, oh, I'm overweight. You know, if I gain weight, I go, I'm fat. <laughs> I'm, I'm 10, I'm 10 uh, pounds. I call it what it is. Um, yeah. And I, and I think it's important to, you know, not be so, you know, get better, thicker skin, you know. Um, so you, you, we're not so offended by something that's so obvious. Like it's the only people who get upset about it are people who are overweight. and are fat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, yes. For sure. So true. No, I appreciate that because. So many people will change their lingo or how they said something. And like you said, you have to call an ace an ace a spade a spade sometimes. You have mm-hmm. to be honest about that. Yep. So I wanted to ask you about your own personal experience with your health. Uh, did that have any influence on uh, writing the book or just bringing the book out and perhaps adding more to the book? Did your own personal experiences uh, inspire the book, let's say? Well, what inspired me about the the book is, you know, I got burnt out from um, working um, and I sold my practice that was on Cape Cod and I moved to Boston. And when I did that, you know, I didn't realize I was burnt out. I didn't know that's what you called it. (laughs) <laughs> and um, so when I went to Boston, it's just like I would get up at five thirty, six o'clock in the morning and go to the gym because I can remember a mentor of mine saying that that's how he got out of burnout. And I knew I was tired, you know, and I didn't want to, you know, I, I wanted to, if I was going to be a leader and lead by example, then I needed to do what I would expect a leader to do who was in the same place. Right. So that's because that's when I sold my practice, moved to Boston. And the inspiring thing is that, you know, um, I never lived in a big city before and, um, and I loved it. I loved the buzz mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and Boston's a big little city. It's like really, there's only a million people who live in Boston, maybe two million now, <laughs> but you could walk through and see the same people every day on the same corner <laughs> at the same time. And yeah. what I, I discovered is, is that I looked at how people looked 
And I would ask people, because it scared me, I would ask people if they were okay. You mm-hmm. know, and because it was like nobody was home. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it's just when I was like, are, are you okay? And mm-hmm. they would be like, I am. And they go, why do you ask? Because you look like you're in pain. Mm-hmm. Or you look like you're upset. Or you look very lonely to me. You know, I go, your spirit's telling me it needs to have a conversation with somebody. And they'd go, crazy thing. Um, but nobody walked away from me. And nobody didn't talk to me. Mm-hmm. It was really, I thought that was amazing. And, mm-hmm. you know, and so I started seeing the same people all the time. So I had this like, you know, hey, you know, Pat, how you doing? Because I never told anybody I was a doctor when I did that. Because I just needed to decompress and just take care of myself. And like, you know, get really in good shape. and. And do fun things that I wanted to do. I love to travel and didn't have the opportunity to do it. You know, mm-hmm. and I was, and the other thing that was really inspiring, in, you know, from that, and I've had instances where I've like helped a guy go to, to the hospital. You know, he said, I have a, uh, I said, you, he was sweating. I said, you oh. need to go to the hospital. And, um, and I'm just looking at him. I said, he looked great. I said, you need to go to the hospital. And I said, let me call you a cab, you know, and I was I'm really good at that. I liked it in the city, like, taxi. <laughs> and so it pulled the taxi over and I said, can you take him to Mass General main entrance, please? And, um, and he just said, you know, I don't know why I'm listening to you. I said, it's okay. <laughs> I said, it's better to be safe than sorry. I said, we can call, you can call on the way going over there that you're going over to the hospital, to your right. office. They'll get over right. it. And they're yeah. not going to fire you. It's, it's right. a law in Boston. Yeah. You know, and so that was one thing. The other thing is I read at the, around the same time this article from the CDC. And it had 2,500 participants in that study approximately across the United States. So nobody knew each other. Okay. And they took the blood and urine of every one of those people. And every one of those people had all 212 potentially dangerous chemicals in their body. Oh, my goodness. For me, that was like, oh, my God. I go, how could it be? No wonder people are getting sick. They're getting fat and they're getting tired or they're getting sick. And they're having things in their environment that they aren't even aware of that are there that the government's okay and the FDA is okay to put in our environment. And then we have the exposure to it. It's got to go someplace. Sixty. 5% 5% of what you put on your skin gets absorbed into you, the internal body. You better right. read labels, right. you know, and better know if you can't pronounce something, I don't care, what the side effect of that something that you can't pronounce or something that you can pronounce means everything. It means everything to your health going down the line because a lot of those things that you put in, one dose is not, you know, it isn't going to kill you, but the accumulatory effect can accelerate your life. And I don't know if anybody who ha- wants to give up their mind or their body for no apparent reason, at all, especially if they have children and their legacy is not fulfilled yet. And, and I always say I want to push people to have their full human potential. Uh, and, and I like that because it's like, as then we all thrive. It isn't yeah. just one person. We all thrive. We all go down that same path together. And, you know, and that little bit, you know, can make a huge difference. And the other thing just to be aware of, by the year 2030, we're not so far away from 2030, 50% of the population in the United States are going to be diagnosed with a chronic illness or disease. Where do you think it comes from? It's got to come from your environment. It's got to come from the foods that you eat because you're, D, you're not your DNA. You're how your DNA explains itself to your environment. Right. And I use the word explain as opposed to express is because you got to have, you have that environmental input, even the NIH, when back in 86 updated their definition of what health is, it's not just so, you know, the lack of infirmities, you know, it's also your environment and how you interact and your aspirations and your, what's inspires you for a better health, you know, but environment is a key word, you know, in that definition for sure. Oh yeah. That is really, oh staggering to hear that yeah it well you you know go ahead no you you look you're like when you pour water you don't want to drink sink water water from the tap you know it's loaded with there's neurotoxins in it why would you if you know something is harmful for you why would you put it in your mouth you know and that's it's and a lot of times some of those things are very addictive like sugar you know and you know, and uh, there's things, you know, if people want to lose weight, they should never use sweeteners, like artificial sweeteners. It's like, yeah, it interferes so with the uptake. I mean, there's a list. 
<laughs> that's, yeah. that's just that's just the surface, you know, of that. There's a lot more. Than that. But, you know, we have to have, you know, we need to have better information or access to better information. Because after you have the access to it, then you can make an educated decision for yourself. Absolutely. Right? The and then you can just have to go home. Yes. Over the holidays, you know, I'm 44 and I was telling my niece and her husband, thank you. Over the holidays, I was telling my niece and her husband, I was like, you know, once you hit 40, like you'll notice these subtle changes. So I was like, please enjoy your 30s because it's going to change. But you bring up such a great point. When you become aware of the things within your environment, simple things such as tap water, you know, getting a filter, you know, you can make changes so that you're, you may notice a few changes as you get older, but you can be in complete control of that. So it's really wonderful to share that with people that it's not mm-hmm. hopeless. You know, and I also, too, you know, just as an advocate, you know, and playing, you know, the devil's advocate here, is that when you go to a Western medicine scenario, and, you know, I was in a, a situation where, um, you know, the, the, like mammograms get this high dose of radiation um, where, you know, they kept on, you know, saying like, oh, we think we saw something. So I said, how long ago did you think you saw that? You know, then I'm in the room with this radiologist and I didn't tell him what I did. And so I'm looking and I said, wow, I've never seen, you know, my chest along a whole big wall. You know, right. I said, this is rather cool. And so I right. said, so what are you looking at? You know, and he pointed out what he was looking at. And I said, well, those look like they have rounded borders i said that's good um you know and so uh, he said yeah but i think we still should take a look at it and i said well what do you think it is and he used some initials and he said you know in england as he goes it's a non-event and i'm thinking here's an american doctor you know who's a radiologist is telling me it's not an event but yet he wants me to go get a biopsy right and so um you know and and so I, you know, I asked him a couple other questions i said so when's the first time you've ever saw this i mean has this just come up in the last like since the last time I had a mammogram, you right. know, oh no, 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 it's been there for like the last, like, you know, like three or four years. And I just went like, oh, let's look at those. Are there yeah. any more than there were then, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, so I'm thinking I got hit in the chest one time. Where could I could have got damage from? I got hit in the chest one time with a softball, playing softball when someone hit it from home plate that hurt and you know and then I had a I had a dog who would wake up in the middle of the night and decide he wants to be on that side of the bed and crawl over the top of me (laughs) I'm thinking like oh my god you know (laughs) and and then when one went the other one followed so it's just you know I'm just thinking like where could I have had that kind of in that type of injury that would have made that happen and then you know and then I went in for the the survey and I did my own research before I got there and I said, do an ultrasound. I need an ultrasound as a bottom line. Right. And, um, and this woman said, well, that's not diagnostic. And I said, Oh, quite contrary. It is diagnostic. If you can't do an MRI, suddenly oh. it becomes, cause suddenly it becomes diagnostic. You know, mm-hmm. they hated me, um, oh. you know, and then, that's you know, and then when they repeated, yeah, but you know, they went and did what they needed to do and they went and wanted to get the location, but they were in the same room as I was and they were talking about me while they were whispering. Oh. And I just said, I went, um, excuse me, unless you talk louder, I'm getting up off this table right now and this exam is over. Yes. And they're going, well, every time you talk, you move. And I said, well, if you talk louder, I wouldn't have to move. <laughs> but I, <laughs> you know, and they end up doing the, in the ultrasound also. You know, and that woman left, the woman who I was talking to left, I never saw her again. But the head of radiology came in and did my ultrasound. Mm-hmm. And so, um, because I, what I, I know my research, I know, and I always implore people, get better information before you go in. Absolutely. You know, and it's just like, and if they think it's so, you know, like, why are they making you wait three weeks, you mm-hmm. know, to repeat something? You know, I always think, you know, repeat it now. Let's do it now. Now's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a, so I love advocating for women. So if women like, you know, I need to know what to ask my doctor. I love making those questions up, you yeah. know, and because I just think if you, when you ask the right question, you get the right answer. Right. And right. if you don't know the right question to ask, you're making solid decisions about the rest of your life on something that might be a mis- inf- bit of misinformation. That's true. And if you've right. done your homework, you know, they may have that information, but if you don't bring it up, they're not necessarily going to say anything about it. Mm-hmm. Right. And then they go, have a great day. And then it's 400 bucks. <laughs> so, oh, you know, no. the, 
you know, it's, it's just like, and a lot of people don't realize, you know, the out-of-pocket expense for chronic illness and disease either. I mean, it's a study that I read about two, two or three years ago, back in um, 2000, oh, God, was it, this is like, which 22? So it must have been like 2021, 20, 2021, and that, that the average out-of-pocket expense that someone spends out of their own pocket is around 20 grand just on type 2 diabetes. It's a lot more for if you, and type 2 diabetes is 40% of the people with that have a direct connection to Alzheimer's and getting it and progressing with that and also heart disease. So that's a lot of people (laughs) um, that don't have, you know, that could have better information that could have a better life and they could use that money in other places, you know, that's more valuable for them, but they need to take care of their health now, not wait till they have a crisis. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah. So many people, uh, they're not necessarily proactive. So also wonderful why you have your book, you know, so that people can have resources and tools. Mm-hmm. It's a place to start. You know, it's it's like I, I believe that you should test, not guess, you mm-hmm. know, and when, you know, and if you want to have a better um you know, better perspective and funnel for what organ systems might be glitching, you know, right. where something needs to be attention. This is the book for anybody who wants to do that. And then you can keep on going back to it every five, six months or something. Oh, I haven't felt good for the last couple months. You know, I'm mm-hmm. just going to go see what it is and just get a fresh sheet out and answer the questions, total them up and see what your chart is. You yes. always, anybody who buys my book always has access to me. They can schedule a time on my calendar and have a chat with me about the results are. I just need to have the results before um, or have like the chart actually filled out so that when I sit down and talk to somebody, we could talk real, real words and real actions, you know, what next steps are. And and that's that whether you work with me or not, I just want you to, for me, that's my gift back to everything that I was ever taught. Mm, I love that. And also having a book like this, it's a resource for life. You know, you don't just read it once and be like, oh, okay, I understand. It's important Mm -hmm. to consistently use it as a resource, as a guide. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. It's just like if, if that's the case, then the value of it's priceless. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so I think you're also a chiropractor. I'm trained as a chiropractor. I went to chiropractic school first. Okay. Um, and my, uh, you know, in, in my, uh, I almost, I almost did not go to college, uh, but my father decided that he was going to teach me a lesson and took me for a drive into Detroit and uh, mm-hmm. stopped on a street where the riots started from 1967. Okay. And he told me to get out of the, get out. Cause they never rebuilt that street. Um, he goes, get out and, and pick a house. <laughs> and he said, because if you don't go to college, this is where you're going to live, you know? Yeah. And then I just calmly, I just, in like a nano New York nanosecond, I said, I'll go to the college of your choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and I, and I did that, but you know, it's, um, you know, the, I'm so glad that I had really great mentors and some mm-hmm. of the great chiropractors that were of my time that some of them are no longer there who develop techniques that really help people get unstuck, feel better, think better, move better structurally, mentally, you know, I was really blessed to have those people, you know, at my disposal, who I could put my hands on, who, you know, I had somebody uh, check me for allergies one time. I couldn't stand it. If someone was smoking two buildings down, I could smell it. Oh and goodness. so, you know, and so he, I said to him, I go, I, I go, my driving my husband crazy. <laughs> just, I get in the car, I'm going, someone's smoking. And so he, he just said, he goes, okay, let's see where it's at. So he fixed that in Three minutes, it was gone. And I never had, I have not ever had sensitivity to it. I said, I, can I learn how to do that? He said, sure. And he was te- just launching his courses to be able to te- to learn that and to be able to like follow him around as one of his uh, mentees, you know. Um, but he was so great. I mean, I've, I've seen him do like miraculous things with people um, mm-hmm. in, a, in moments, like in five minutes, um, where people who like, you know, had, you know, shaking Parkinson's, you know, to where when they did a specific technique, and I don't remember what the, the sequencing is, is that doing something to help them stop the tremors. 
Mm. I'm going like, how beautiful is that? What a gift to give somebody the gift of health. I mean, it, it, mm. and and to have that knowledge, I, it was it was very fascinating. It was a lot of fun, um, and I thought like, let's go out and heal the world. <laughs> and um, and and I had you know a lot of opportunity. I became a sports physician, you know, certified mm-hmm. sports physician okay. also, and. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and work a lot of really fun events, you know, the LPGA and, you know, and get to see people who are really, really elite athletes. There's a difference, you know, even when they retire, you know, and I'm thinking, um, it's just like, I don't look like that, but I can hit farther than they can on golf ball. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I played in invitationals and stuff like that, but yeah. it, it was really, it's a, it was a beautiful experience to be able to, you know, like take a gift that I didn't know that I had, right. you know, um, and, even though I played doctor when I was a kid, I never killed anybody. I never yep. lost anybody. Everybody got well, you know, and, you know, and going down that path, you know, I went and became a chiropractor and that was in, I never looked, I never looked back ever that, that, and I always thought, you know, everybody should be adjusted, especially children, you know, nine out of 10 children that are born have some type of cervical damage in their neck from the birthing process. That's why you see a chiropractor. It's it's a scary statistic. Nine out of ten. Mm-hmm. That's pretty high. If you ever look around a group of a hundred people, I mean, like there's only nine people who don't, you know, out of that group or ten people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just amazing, and you're so personable. So being able to help people on multiple levels, you know, I'm sure that just adds a level of trust that is just unmatched. So I always been told I have my father's voice and, um, and when my, uh, my girlfriend always said to me and she was a patient of mine first and we've been friends for 30 years now, she always said, when you tell someone that they take calcium, they don't say yes or no. They say how much, you know, what's my dose? What's my dose? Cause I did a lot of kinesiology. You know, okay. so I could take, get a subclinical level of where somebody needed something or that they, they didn't, you know, need something, um, nutritionally that was helpful for them, you know, mm-hmm. especially if they're trying to get rid of toxins out of their system mm-hmm. and not feel like they're dying. A lot of people do a detox and they're like in bed for a day or two because they feel so all those toxins are just dumping into their system and they don't have a place to go. So it's not a good idea to do it. There's a way to do that, that, you know, you're, st- you stay healthy, you stay on your game, you yeah. know, and you you stay at your high performance levels that you're looking to stay at in order to do that. There is a way to do it. I, c- I can help you. Yes. I've heard tons of people when they detox, they are just not at a good place. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Call me afterwards. Cause they get really ornery, you mm-hmm. know, it's cause they have all their bodies just, you know, trying, it's like almost like they have the flu, a self-induced flu. And we know what the flu looks like lately. <laughs> it's just yeah. we don't want any part of that, right. you know. And um, you know, it, it just just think about it because there's a you know there's a whole learning process about the program that I help people with with that, you know. And a lot some people go like do they do a 30 day detox? And I go, I never recommend that the first mm-hmm. time that you do something like that. You've got to like you know d- how well is my body you know going to do that? So invest in something small and then you can repeat that process, you know, like either on a longer period of time, but you might not need it. Why not do them in 10 days, you know, say like sequences instead of like a 30 day sequence. That's that's never made sense to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone is like, Oh, that's it. I I'm overweight. I'm feeling unhealthy. Uh, I need to get this book. Do you say dive right in or should people go at, you know, like a pace that makes sense to them? Don't just dive into it. You don't want to dive. I would always say you want to come in because the water's fine, but you want to take a look at like, where's my weakest link and where's my strongest link. So you've got to know what your base foundation is. So -hmm. when you're looking at the, the concept of no cart before the horse Mm -hmm. is you want to know what cart you're driving. So I always ask, like, so what do you think you're driving right now? You know, are you driving a jalopy? You know, are you driving a Mustang? Are you driving a Lexus? Are you driving a Ferrari? You know, if you don't like the Ferrari, maybe it's a Porsche, you know. Mm -hmm. But what car represents your body? Because the higher the car that you have, the more high maintenance it is. Now, women know all about high maintenance. Oh, yeah. You know, when it comes to everything else except themselves. <laughs> and so, cause that, cause we do more for everyone else than we do ourselves. It's just like changing that mindset 
around to do that kind of self-love because you can't take care of somebody else unless you take care of yourself. Right. That's a simple Dr. Pat rule. And, you know, and, and, and taking a, a look at that piece of the puzzle, you feel like you know where everything fits in, then you can make, make best choices about where do I focus first? Because you might want to focus on losing weight, but if you don't get your body healthy, then mm-hmm. your the toxins when you lose weight aren't going to have a safe place to go. Because you want them to go in the toilet. You don't want them to recycle. And yeah. if you have a, an intestinal tract that is leaky gut or has um, issues with absorption because of this damage, then that's going to have a tendency to keep on repeating and repeating. And when the liver gets overwhelmed and trying to get rid of those toxins, because that is a function of the liver, then it gets stored in blood, brain, bone, and fat. And that's where we got problems. And that's where we have see the weakest link showing up and that. So what car are you driving? You know, you're driving jalopy, Mustang, Mm -hmm. Lexus, Porsche, you know, (laughs) Ferrari, you've got to be willing to invest in your life, you know, your career, you know, in your relationships. And you can do that by having, you know, superior wellness initiatives mixed with, you know, mindset mastery. Because you cannot be successful without having the mind, the right mindset that goes along with that. And when you do that, then you're unstoppable. <laughs> right. I love it. <laughs> well, wonderful. It's an easy, easy solution. Yeah. Yes. I wanted to ask you, I know <clears throat> you're in Boston. Uh, are you available for individuals? I'm in, no, I'm in, I'm in Florida right now. <laughs> yes. I wanted yeah. to ask you if uh, people wanted to reach out to you, if you are available online uh, as a resource for uh, if they wanted help with their... Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody who wants to connect with me, they okay. can. Um, if you're in the United States or North America and you want to find out more about me, you can right. text lifestyle to 26786. That's lifestyle to 26786. And if you want to find out how well you're handling toxins in your environment, to that same 26786, text the, the initials M as in Mary, D as in David, Q as in Queen. And mm-hmm. that, and you will have the first testing. You'll be testing that guessing for your first level of entry to find out how you're handling toxins in your environment, whether or not you're a candidate for uh, a detox, you know, mm-hmm. and whether or not your gut's in good shape to handle that, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you mm-hmm. also have a venue there to be able to um, connect with me and reach out and make an uh, make an appointment with me to chat with me about that. You know, and if, and the lifestyle should take you to my website, which is Health Team Network. There's a lot of places on there to reach out to me and touch base with me and grab time with me. Oh, wonderful. And if someone would love to pick up your book, where can they find your book? Amazon. No, uh, you can find it. it, it it's, it's, it's this. I would tell you to buy the paper edition for sure. Oh. But, you know, um, Amazon's a good source for that. And um, and then also it's it's easy to find. You want the edition because somebody else there's a secondary wholesale that still has books from my first edition. My Ooh. second edition is all the same color letter. It's all the same color letters. That they're they're all in red. And okay. um, so you don't want the uh, you don't want the first edition. You want the second edition. And you want it in paper. And the reason for it is is because then you've got it in your hands, right? Yeah. You know, and it's just like you can't get you can't leave it. I mean, when you do digital, I can't even tell you what I the I know I have like fifteen or twenty books on digital mm-hmm. on Kindle. I couldn't tell you what they are except one of them's my book. <laughs> I'm sick that and tired. You know, but you know, to have it in front of you, yeah. then you can put that. You can put it on your calendar to yeah. like look at it, like you know, sixty days later. You know, mm-hmm. because sometimes we want to DIY it, right? And if you're going to DIY it, sometimes you can make matters worse as opposed to better. Yeah. So if you choose to DIY it, if you have this book, you always will have access to be able to reach out and, and grab 30 minutes of my time with me and that we can talk about what your results are, what they mean, and what your next best steps are, whether they're with me or with somebody else. It doesn't matter. I just want you to be well. I want you to thrive. Be Do good. Have fun. Thrive. And I absolutely support having the book in hand. That means a lot. That's a very easy yep. resource. You said when you have your audio books, very seldom do you go back. It's so much better to have the physical copy. So I agree. Yeah, and, well, and when I listen to audio book, I 
fall asleep. So I use them as, you know, for, it's like, you know, I don't, it's, I just lay down or I listen to them in the morning for 20 minutes and right. I have to set my timer or else I, I don't wake up, you know, and also I'm going to be running, you know, in the uh, coming months um, in May, I'm going to be doing some uh, free webinars uh, that are set up with the idea of um, doing a course, a um, pilot course um, in June. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm going to have a complimentary, you know, like, you know, webinars that are going to be, you know, uh, free of charge to come to. So if anybody gets on this, you know, our mailing list here or whatever, they would be, have an opportunity to be able to to grab that and grab me for a discount for my June, for my summer special. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. Everyone, please take advantage. Uh, I'm not just talking because she's a guest. I also have her book. And I have fully supported wonderful resource, wonderful tool. Uh, Pat, thank you thank so you. much for creating the book. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was divine in the intervention. <laughs> it was divine intervention. I had someone tell me that, oh, you're going to write a book. And I went, I don't think so. I'm really? going to retire. You know, and I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to find some little coastal town to be a chiropractor in, in mm-hmm. Chile or something, yeah. you know. And um, this, this guy who looked at me, um, I was waiting for my girlfriend at a conference and he was doing palm reading. I'm going, <laughs> you know, I'm to touch my hands. <laughs> but he goes, I, I'll show you, but just don't touch my hands. So, and um, I just showed him and he's, and he's telling me all this stuff. And he said, I'm thinking, this guy's crazy. You know, I go, there's no way what he's saying, blah, blah, blah. And one night I woke up and I just said, I've got to write a book about, you know, and I'm just thinking, I said, all those things, sometimes when people say stuff to you, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, you just take it, remember it, and just remember the time that it happened because, you know, that came true quite, it, it was, it was pretty bold. Oh, and, okay. um, you know, and, and for me, I was like incognito. Somebody yeah. asked me what I did. I said, I go, oh, I'm retired. I'm semi-retired. And then I just changed the subject, you know, because that's when I got sold my practice, you know, and, yeah. and, um, and I wanted to just have my own space. And I was very, had big boundaries about that at the time. Now I don't care. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm definitely not burnt out anymore. <laughs> so that was a long time ago. But I'm really, I'm happy. I've been put on the planet and given an opportunity to help people. And mm-hmm. have better lives in all aspects. And you can have it all. Yes, that's so true. You can have it all. And I love because a couple of times you mentioned that you were incognito or, you know, not presenting as a doctor. And I think that speaks volumes, you know, because you're not coming from a pretentious place. You just sincerely want to help people. Yeah. Even when, you know, I was moving into this building, I had medical books that were laying. And one's called the Merck's Manual. It's like um, the Bible of diagnosis, you know, it gives you the basic stuff that everyone, we got tested out of this book numerous times. And the, this guy who got an elevator with me, he goes, what kind of doctor are you? And I just went, um, I'm doctor. I, I go, what kind of doctor? Or I think, and then he said, what I he said, uh, what kind of doctor are you? I said, I am Pat. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and, um, and so he just, he just said, but what kind of doctor are you? And I said, um, I said, I am retired. Um, and my elevator door opened up the floor is moving out I'm sorry to say please God I don't ever want to run into that guy again right. um, because right. I just I just needed to decompress and so I think that when you 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 get labeled as this is who you are but that's not who I am I am that I am you know I, I am it. Dr. Pat now I am yeah. I don't have any problems saying it at all <laughs> I am yeah. Dr. Pat <laughs> yes oh well Dr. Pat thank you so much for your wonderful book why are you sick, fat, and tired? Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, audience, if you're interested in reaching out to Dr. Pat, please feel free to do so. If you could give us the, the acronym to text again. Great. So in finding out more about me, it's uh, 26786 is what you're going to text. And what you're going to text to that is either MDQ to find out what how you're handling toxins in your environment. And if you're a candidate to do a detoxification. And the other one is lifestyle. Okay. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's t- big letters or like, you know, capitals or, you know, small case. Um, but it's just, you know, lifestyle in or um, if you you do both of them, you don't have to do just one. Um, MDQ, like okay. Mary David Queen. 
Wonderful. Oh, well, Dr. Pat, you've been a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for being on. Thank you personally. I find your book a wonderful resource. Yeah, I'm glad to be able to hear it. So nothing's by chance. That's right. Yes, everything's kismet. <laughs> well, again, audience, uh, please, if you're interested, please feel free to reach out to Dr. Pat. Dr. Pat, once again, I want to thank you for being on the Cult of Kindness podcast. Namaste. Thank Namaste. you. Thank you.